fellas, AC here. Welcome to another review. Is there a better feeling to be in the company of nature? I thought there isn't. I thought I'd take you in the company of nature today. I'm going to review a fragrance which will take you to a surrounding like this. It's a green scent. It's vetiver dominated fragrance. It is Guerlain Vetiver. What a beautiful fragrance this is, fellas. Absolutely stunning. And to be able to do this, I thought I'll take you to an environment which is peaceful, calm, quiet. It's just, it's just blissful. And this fragrance is exactly like that. You know, fellas, this is the frame that captures this scent. You know, green, bright, drenched in sunshine, as if you're with nature. I just wanted to show you what this fragrance does to me. Just, it's a beautiful creation, just like nature. It's a very natural smelling scent. So let's talk about bottle design for a second. Now this is the vintage bottle I have. If you look at it, the current bottles are like the Listerine bottles, yeah? This, these ones I think came out in the 2000s and then you, you can, if you, if you look for them, you, you'll find them. So these, at the top it says Vetiver, one side Gerla. What a beautiful piece of bottle this is. This is one of the most prettiest looking bottles. So before I get into the details of this fragrance here, yeah, let's talk about how this fragrance came about. So the thing is, Gerla haven't released a single masculine since 1904. Mouchoir de Missou. I have reviewed it, you can check it out. So 57 years had passed before Gerla decided to release a masculine. So when Jean-Paul Gerla decided to go for a masculine he thought what note would depict masculinity and he went for two notes vetiver tobacco very masculine and it takes you close to nature doesn't it so that's how it came about the concept now where did he go to find his vetiver he went to india south of india he had heard stories about vetiver being used since ancient times in india for various purposes yeah i've touched upon that in my review of nishane as uh, sultan vetiver so he went to South of India because the vetiver from South of India has this very deep smell. And the smell now has become a signature of many, many vetiver based fragrances. So one that comes to mind is um, Tom Ford's grey vetiver he uses this kind of vetiver. So this is the first time I'm shooting outdoors, guys. And uh, I'm hoping the voice quality, the audio quality and the video quality is going to be okay um i'm not used to outdoor shooting i thought i'll give it a try today it's a beautiful day and this is uh, basically one of the um national heritage sites in in southwest of england and it's just a beautiful breathtaking scenery i mean i want you to enjoy this as well and while we do that we're going to talk about the fragrance So yeah, people say, you know, uh, what's the big deal about vetiver? It's just grass, right? But if you look at one of the most, most frequently used notes, if you like, in perfumery is vetiver, like cedar. And vetiver basically depends on, the use of vetiver basically depends on the perfumer. And it's the magic of the perfumer that determines what the fragrance is going to be like. And you know, Gala vetiver is one of the most respected uh, vetivers in the world, right? So this thing has um, an opening which has got, vetiver has got nothing to do with the opening of the fragrance, right? It starts off um, smelling like a very uh, lemony, bright and spicy scent with a hint of tobacco. Tobacco is very obvious right from the start. So it starts smelling like uh, petty grain, mixed with bergamot, with uh, coriander and there is a hint of tobacco which is slightly oily. You know when I first smelled this fragrance I thought it was an old man's fragrance, literally. Then I decided okay let me think about this. See this was created in the 1960s right and men then used to have um, the tendency to smoke and they used to work with their hands. So this fragrance captures a working man. It uses um, notes of t 
tobacco to simplify the tobacco note is a bit oily and smoky it's not like a fine tobacco it's like a smoked cigarette along with that you have um, a soapy quality to it and that's petty grain petty grain or neroli I think both are there in the fragrance so it's got as if somebody's finished their day they've been working with their hands and they've walked uh, they've uh, washed uh, or taken a shower and used the soap so that's the that's the opening vetiver comes into play much much later about 45 minutes later I love this fragrance I absolutely adore this I can't I can talk about this fragrance for one hour non-stop so when this fragrance gets into its medium stages that's when two or three notes come to the fore the big one is the vetiver an Indian vetiver has this very spicy green uh, sort of uh, dense smell and that's the kind of vetiver you will smell here but it's been lightened up by bergamot it's been lightened up a little bit by coriander freshness of coriander there's nutmeg here and there is also petty grain so it's beautifully deep and yet bright so when I say lightened up it doesn't mean it's been sort of embellished it's not so that's that's the vetiver then there's this slight hint of cedar right and slight sweetness of orange so it's not only dense green and herbal smelling vetiver it's also got this slight hint of sweetness very slight hint of sweetness that's orange and when the fragrance rushes towards the dry down I wouldn't say rush it just slowly gradually moves towards the dry down it becomes a little bit more woodier yeah there's also a note of I think patchouli but I can't um, remember exactly but I think there's a note of patchouli and slight musk so muskiness and woodiness comes out a bit more with that beautifully fine vetiver that vetiver is so special that it has been replicated many times many many times uh, the closest one I can think of is Tom Ford's grey vetiver the vetiver in Tom Ford's grey vetiver smells a little bit like the vetiver that has been used here so that's the journey of the fragrance if you like yeah now let's talk about pros and cons the biggest pro of this fragrance here number one is that this fragrance will will get you addicted 100 percent it's happened to me I ignored it thinking this was too old managed because of that tobacco note and now I just I want to wear it every time it's like this every time I want to feel as if I want to wear something which takes me close to nature yeah that's that's how it'll make you feel it's very natural smelling very beautifully composed you know some people call this one of the greatest men's fragrances ever created they're not wrong you smell it and you'll know so number two pro right this fragrance has this quality of as if it's a trail scent so you would feel as if uh, you can't smell it anymore it's not there and suddenly somebody just comes over to you and says you know you smell amazing what are you wearing so it has it is a trail scent it's not on your face it's a very sophisticated very elegant um, very friendly sort of a fragrance it's really really is very very good yeah I'm going to do a comparison video because I'm going to get uh, myself uh, the latest version and I'm going to do a comparison video but till then I can say that this is not a beast mode fragrance in spite of it being a vintage so that's number two it's just alluring it'll pull people towards you it's a fantastic date night fragrance as well number three is the quality of the composition see I've heard that the current version is going for very little money and that's true with Habit Rouge as well so I, I imagine this to be um, in the range of 25 to 35 British pounds 100 ml and what you're getting is much much more than that it costs a lot of money to get a decent vetiver fragrance this is natural smelling beautifully composed absolutely amazing quality fragrance downsides now the downsides are this is slightly mature because of that tobacco note it can really sort of put you off a bit because that tobacco note is like as if you are a smoker it's more like a, a cigarette smell and as I said you know it was created to replicate a working man people used to smoke a lot in the 60s so it has that smoking tobacco kind of a smell so that's number one downside number two downside is the longevity the longevity will appear to be at least four hours to six hours but it's not it stays on your skin people will smell you but that can put some people off right they want to smell themselves that won't happen after four hours four to six hours max 
so that's the other downside now occasion this is a daytime fragrance as i said you know when you want to feel as if you're part of nature you want to feel as if you belong to the nature that's that's when you put this on it'll make it'll take you it'll transport you to nature but if it is grass right you'll feel as if you're sitting in a meadow like this you know that's that's the thing that's the occasion that i can talk about age groups slightly mature 35 35 plus yeah this is a mature scent i don't know about the current formulation i'll check it out but 35 um plus would uh, definitely 35 plus so that's the age group uh value for money tremendous value for money you have to like vetiver you have to be able to understand and appreciate a creation which was made about 60 years ago so if you don't like that kind of stuff you won't like it but for me it's absolutely stunning i have completely changed my mind on this fragrance totally yeah so marks out of 10 i'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10. i wouldn't say this is the greatest fragrance ever created like some people say but this is a very fine vetiver if you're a vetiver lover you have to have vetiver sorry gerland vetiver either vintage or current formulation in your in your collection it's just tremendous it's a joy yeah hope you like the review hope you like the surroundings and there's some bonus footage at the end take care fellas bye bye